Greetings everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we're starting on part four of the series where I build a rotating gazebo with a swing. This is the final of those videos and this has to do with the swing. Uh, this is a swing that I custom designed in SolidWorks. I wanted something a little different than most of the swings you see. The first thing we're gonna do is cut these two befores right here. They're 70 inches long for this particular swing and all I'm gonna do is cut them on the miter saw. Next, I'm cutting the boards that you sit on. Uh, these are five and a half inches wide. I'm gonna be cutting them in half so that the strips will be skinny enough and narrow enough to fit the contour of the bottom that I'm gonna do. All right, that's got all the butt boards. I'll have to go back and split them down the middle, but I'm gonna wait until I set up my table saw for that. I should have a couple extra boards there so I can weed out the ones with any knots or anything in them. Next, I'll be cutting these boards here. I'm calling them the back boards. I gotta have 26 of them 24 inches long, but that's after I split them. Close enough. These will actually be a little less than 24 inches, so the fact that I came up a little short out of a board is not a big deal. Okay, that's 13. That's got the, the uh, back boards. Again, they have to be split down, so I'll wind up with 26 pieces. Next, I'm cutting these boards that give the back its curved shape. These are two bays treated. I need one of them 62 and a half, which is this one right here. And then I need one 60, which is this one right here. Once I get them cut to length, I'll, I'll draw the contours on them and then use a jigsaw to cut that out. In order to get the accurate shape of the parts, I use slide work to create uh, full size 2D drawings of the parts. Uh, I had to print them across multiple pages and then I taped the pages together. I'll cut this out and it'll give me the shape of the actual part. I only printed half of it because I can fold it the other direction and make the other half. I'll do this with all the odd shaped parts just so I know that they match the computer drawing. Okay, here's all four of the seat struts. I've got them clamped together and I'm gonna use an orbital sander to make sure that this curve is all the same on all of them. This board is the upper back support board. It's gonna be cut in the contour that gives the seat back that curved shape. So I cut it first with the template I printed. The template originally extended out to here along this edge, that told me the straight line cut. Now then, this curved cut has to be beveled back so the boards will contact it evenly. What I did is I trimmed off the front part of the template to my second line. I'm gonna remark this line and that's gonna show me how much slope this direction I really need. So I'm gonna try to use the jigsaw and cut this around at an angle a little bit to match this slope. So in other words, I wanna go in the top here and come out the bottom right on this edge. Here's the bottom seat back support. I did a lot better job on it than I did the top one. Looks a whole lot nicer, but I, th I think the top one will still be okay. Now I have to start ripping down the boards to the widths of the slats that I'm using for the bottom and the top. But first I gotta set up my saw for that. I don't have a table saw, so I'm gonna improvise. I made this thing that allows me to attach my skill saw to it upside down. I lose a little bit of depth of cut, but that's okay. I'm only gonna be cutting these five quarter boards here. So I'm gonna have plenty of depth. Saw goes in there like this. There we go. I bring the saw down and snug it up on the, on the depth. That kind of locks it to this board right here. Like that. Now all I have to do is run these screws in. Now snug up my workbench. And now I have a makeshift table saw. Um, I'll have to lock the switch on on it and uh, 
make my stop, which I'm just gonna use a piece of wood and a couple of clamps, because once I get it set up, most everything's gonna be the same width anyways. I found this in my pile of junk that I have here. It's basically an operated foot switch. So I think all my lumber is short enough that I can use this to kick the saw on when I need it so it's not sitting here running so much. Okay, I had to lock the switch on the saw down with a little C-clamp. It won't stay locked in, which is a safety thing, I'm sure. See if my foot switch works. All right, let's try our first board. It works good, but it's covered me up with sawdust. I guess I'll just get covered up. It's got all the seat back ones. Now I gotta rip the ones that go on the bottom, the slats that go across the bottom that you sit on. Okay, here I am just pre-assembling the back. I'll take it back apart, or at least the slats off of it a little later. But the reason I'm doing this is because the slats that go on here have a contour cut across the top of them. Uh, and I wanna make sure that cut has round over the edges, so, like on the router. So I'll put these on here, I'll make the cut, I'll take them back off, and then that'll allow me to round over all the edges on it. Here's something else I wanted to show. The reason I did these angle cuts on the lower and upper back brace supports is so that these boards or these slats, when I screw them on there, will, will hit these flat or pretty close to it. And it looks like it's gonna be pretty well. So, I'll get these slats screwed on next and spaced out, and then I'll come back and cut the contour cut. Okay, this is the bottom. This is the part that will contact the seat that you're sitting on. I have to go back now and cut these boards off flush with this board right here. The reason I didn't cut them the right angle to begin with is because they're, they're actually transitioning and changing as they spread out the top. Okay, I flipped this over and I determined the best way to cut these end pieces off of the lower back is using a sawzall with a blade long enough to reach through and that way I can hold it on the same angle as this lower back support. I'm gonna get a new blade. Okay, you can see the line hopefully right along here where I'm gonna make the contour cut around the top. I basically just made a template by hand for half of it then flipped it over and did that side over there. So anyway, I'm gonna cut this with a jigsaw. Let's see how it goes. There's a the seat back rough cut. Now I'm gonna go back and sand that top uh, contour cut a little bit with a sander. And then I'm gonna take all those planks back off. I'll have them numbered. And then I'm gonna round over all the edges on them. Okay, I now have the back done. I have the top edge cut. I've uh, taken all the slats off and run them along the router, rounded all the edges. Got everything sanded and ready to stain. I marked where the center of the struts are gonna be and I went ahead and pre-drilled the holes in the two befores. Uh, I'm gonna be screwing up into those struts. I know there's probably people thinking that this is going to be awful weak with the two befores laying flat like that. Uh, but my thoughts are that once I put these uh, boards across the top of it here that you actually sit on, this thing creates basically two small box beams. I don't think it's going to uh, sag at all. I think it'll be really rigid.
I decided to do a test to see how this thing actually would feel. And the back feels good, but the part that you sit on is too far out. So I'm gonna do some modifications here to shorten this distance here and make this more rounded over. Okay, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to move this board back about an inch. So it'll come back about an inch. And then I'm going to recut these uh, struts that I call them into this shape right here. Uh, this board will then be twisted down slightly to this line. The next board will be where you can see it here and the last board will be here. It'll be overlapping the front of this two before once I get it moved. Well, I've made the modification and it really wasn't too hard to do. Uh, and it makes a tremendous difference in the way this thing feels when you sit on it. I think it's about perfect now. If you like anything you've seen in this video, or if it's helpful to you in some way, I would really appreciate it if you'd consider subscribing. There's a fair amount of work in making YouTube videos, and I would really appreciate it. Okay, I've already discovered a problem here uh, that I didn't foresee, and I should have. Basically, this bolt is supposed to go right up through here. This is the right distance where it needs to be for the swing. Well, obviously, you can see there's a problem already. I have the rafter in the way here. Uh, so uh, I can't go up through there unless I do this. I think I'm going to take the saws on. I'm going to cut the a place out of this rafter. Two half inch washers and the nut. There we go. Wind up with about three inches of bolt sticking up through the top. That ain't going anywhere. Well, that's going to do it for this segment of the rotating gazebo with swing. Of course, this is a swing portion. If you saw anything in this video that you like or felt it was entertaining in some way, please do me a favor and hit that subscribe button. Every subscription really helps me as being a new YouTuber. Also, hit the like button, tap the bell icon so that you'll be notified of any of my future uploaded videos. Thanks again for watching. I really appreciate it.